guys, my name is Jacqueline. I am a corporate flight attendant and welcome to my YouTube channel, Jacqueline Travels. Before we get into the video, I wanna thank you guys very much. You have been so kind and you've expressed how overjoyed you are for the announcement that I put out a while ago saying that there is a baby on board. So thank you all for your kind words in response to my vlog or my Instagram post or my Twitter post. Wherever you saw it, I just wanna thank you a million times over for your kind words. Today's vlog is coming from a viewer question. They wanted to know what happens when you are working a trip or if you are just a passenger traveling in general and a pilot gets sick. All right, as you guys know, not every single flight is the same, so there are different situations and different results or different protocols for what happens when a pilot gets sick when he or she is on a trip. I'm just gonna start out with the original question. It was what happens when a pilot gets sick when you are on a layover? And a layover is actually the best place for a pilot to get sick. If your layover is long enough, the company might have the time or the resources to fly another pilot out to cover your trip once it's supposed to leave again. Or if you work in the commercial airline world, then a reserve pilot or a backup pilot or on-call, a standby pilot, whatever you wanna call it, they would be flown into the city and then they would pick up the trip while the pilot either chooses to stay at the layover destination hotel and recover, or if he's not deathly ill or contagious, uh, they could mask up and fly back home and recover at home. Granted, it's never fun to be sick on a layover, especially if you're in a new place and you want to experience that. But as far as a company standpoint or running an airline or flying private jets and running charters, the best place for a pilot to get sick definitely is on a layover. Now, potentially a pilot could wake up on that layover the morning of a flight not feeling well, just right before the plane is scheduled to leave. And in that circumstance, issues arise. So then it is a mad scramble to find someone to cover the trip. Since the airlines have more planes and more pilots, it is generally easier for them to find someone last minute. But for a corporate pilot, you generally don't have pilots waiting on standby in cities, not in the numbers that you would see for commercial pilots anyway. So a few different things could happen. An entire new crew and a new airplane could fly into that city to take your charter guests where they are scheduled to fly. Or the scheduling team or brokers would be in communication with the passengers and let them know that they are airlining an additional pilot in to cover the trip because a pilot fell ill. Now as flight crew, either as a corporate flight attendant, commercial flight attendant, or corporate or commercial pilot, we are exposed to many people. We fly during cold season, we fly during flu season, we're flying, not so much right now, but we are flying during COVID. So we are exposed to a lot of people. And I feel like when I first became a flight attendant and started flying, my immune system was total trash. I was getting sick. It felt like every week or every other week, I would just have a cold and a cough and I was very congested. And sometimes my ears bothered me, which obviously is an issue on an airplane when you're dealing with pressurization. But I always felt run down and terrible. And then all of a sudden, I would be exposed to people who were coughing, people who were vomiting, people who were visibly very ill and for whatever reason decided to get on an airplane. And suddenly I was totally fine around that person. I didn't catch whatever they caught. My immune system became very strong and the sickness just kind of stopped happening. So I do think airline crew can definitely build immunity to some of the things that are out there and we get sick less often than someone who is not exposed to so many different people at so many different times. Okay, now let's talk about what happens if you are a passenger and you are on a commercial airplane and you hear the flight attendant calling for medical assistance because someone has become incapacitated and then you find out it's the pilot flying your plane that has become incapacitated. First, before I even get into it, I wanna assure you, it's completely fine for one of the two pilots to become incapacitated. One pilot can certainly land that plane on his own or on her own. The second thing I wanna say is using the word incapacitated sounds terribly scary. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that someone is unconscious or has died already or is in the middle of having a heart attack and has a defibrillator attached to them. It just means they're not feeling 100% and in this example, they shouldn't be landing an airplane. I do also wanna point out that pilots, whether you are commercial or corporate, they're required to do, I think, a semi-annual physical and that includes getting an EKG. If 
if they're over a certain age. So pilots are constantly monitoring their health just to make sure they are in tip top shape to keep you, the passengers, safe or me as the flight crew safe. Okay, so getting back into it, you are on an airplane, you find out one of the two pilots who has been flying you around suddenly falls ill and cannot land the plane. Like I said, there is no need for you to panic. One pilot can certainly land the plane by themselves. So generally in the flight deck, you have a captain and you have a first officer. There are two people up there. It's a checks and balance kind of system. If something goes wrong, there's more than one decision maker correcting the situation. And then you can even add padding. If you have long haul flights, like flights that are eight hours or longer, there's a captain, there is a first officer, and there is a second officer or an additional crew member. So you have someone extra up there just in case. A great feature that flight crew has that I am able to use as corporate flight crew and that I used to use when I was commercial flight crew was medical sources on the ground. And there are companies out there and hospitals out there and doctors out there who work strictly with the airlines. So we're given a special number to call, a special access code so the people on the ground know who we are and we can list off all the symptoms and then we would have to give passenger information or in the scenario I'm talking about with you guys, pilot information, such as gender, if they're on any medications, what their age is, what they last ate, specific details like that. And after gathering all that data, what these medical professionals on the ground do, they let the flight attendants know how to tend to the person who is incapacitated. Sometimes the flight will have to be diverted if a passenger is incapacitated and it seems to be a serious medical issue. And then sometimes we're able to tend to a passenger who is sick for the duration of the flight and we don't have to divert and we're able to land in our original destination. Now, if there is a flight attendant who is tending to a pilot who is sick, we absolutely 100% would be diverting to the nearest airport that could handle our jet or an airplane or a jumbo jet landing in their airfield. One pilot would not fly the rest of the flight plan. You would wanna have that plane on the ground as soon as possible. And again, it's not because one pilot is not capable of performing all of the duties of the captain and the first officer. It's just with FAA regulations, two pilots are required. So we would just make it a shorter flight time to tend to the pilot who is in need. In my seven years of flying, actually I just missed my seven year anniversary and I can't believe that I did. But um, in my seven plus years of flying, I never had a pilot get sick or become incapacitated either on a layover or on a flight. But I have had many medical experiences with passengers. I have had to divert a few times. I've had to administer oxygen. I've had passengers have a heart attack my first flight ever as a flight attendant. I had a passenger have a heart attack. I've kind of seen it all through the years. Even as a crew member, I broke my hand on a flight one time and I became incapacitated. I did seek medical attention on the ground, obviously, because my hand was very broken. But as I said, I had never seen a pilot become sick or injured during flight. So I wanna thank the viewer who asked that question. I can't find your comment. Like I said, I had a ton of positive comments after my baby news. Um, so it kind of got buried deep down in there, but I didn't forget that you asked me that and I hope you're watching this video. If you guys have any other questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, please leave them down below for me along with a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future flight attendant videos. And thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you all stay safe out there. Bye.